Very pleased uh, and honored to be your judges here today. Uh, my name is Tom Tinder, and I'm an attorney from Charleston, West Virginia. I'm Good morning. Steve, go, go ahead. I'm Steve Franzik, retired professor of political science from the U.S. Naval Academy. Welcome. My name is Tom Vance. I'm a professor at Kansas State University. Looking forward to a great conversation. Thank you, you for are. thank you for allowing us to testify before you today. We're the Black River We the People team from Holland, Michigan, and we represent Michigan's champion, Unit 6. My name is Jonathan Lowry. I am a junior, and I am on Unit 6 in 1. My name is Piper Kendall. I am a junior, and I am on Unit 6 and 3. My name is Dylan Pennington. I'm a senior. I'm on Unit 6 and 3, and I'm proud to introduce our coach, Peter Lutzman, who was assisted by Luke Ryder. We're glad to have you. Let me read the question to you very quickly. In 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, never in the history of this nation have so many people been arrested for the cause of freedom and human dignity, close quote. What lessons can be learned from the Children's March in Birmingham, Alabama? What is civic engagement and what is its significance in American history? What responsibility, if any, do schools have to promote civic engagement? You may begin. The newspapers of May 4, 1963, carried images of policemen with raised clubs over innocent women, of children marching up to the bared fangs of police dogs, of the terrible force of fire hoses sweeping bodies into the streets. This was the campaign's greatest time of stress, and the courage of the students made it our finest hour, wrote Dr. King in his autobiography. Civil rights leaders recruited youth for after-school meetings, teaching nonviolence and establishing rules of engagement. By the hundreds, they turned up, ready to fill the jails for their freedom. The children stood their ground. They sang their songs. They faced Bull Connor head on. Centering their protests around reinvigorating the national desegregation movement, the Children's March showed the necessity for clear goals and protests. Similarly, in 2019, more than half a million youth gathered in D.C. with one goal, ending gun violence. And the student-led March for Our Lives inspired over 280 gun safety laws across the country. Still, protests such as the Women's March seek the zeal of the suffragettes, but fall short due to the breadth of ideas they campaign for. Demonstrating pointed protests will be most successful in effecting change. Protests are only one means of civic engagement, which cooperatively addresses issues of public concern taking many forms. Individual volunteerism, advocacy, organizational involvement, and interactions with the institutions of representative democracy are all ways to be civically engaged. When the people unite behind a coherent political goal, change happens. After the Alien and Sedition Acts of 1798, Jeffersonian Republicans turned out to the polls en masse, spearheading the first peaceful transfer of power in modern democratic history, the so-called Revolution of 1800. Voting, rather than revolt, became the means for change. But when the right to vote is the very change a group desires, the people must turn to protesting. The silent sentinels picketed the White House day and night, and after two years of constant agitation, the 19th Amendment brought women to the ballot box. Civil associations used to be the cradle of democratic habits, but since the 60s, participation in these key groups has fallen off dramatically. Social capital, along with civic engagement, are at dangerous levels, as Robert Putnam demonstrated in Bowling Alone. America is no longer the nation of joiners that Alexis de Tocqueville observed. Democratic norms have declined. This decline of associational political involvement and associations has left schools as the last bastion to nurture civic engagement. But students today are woefully un underprepared to participate in democracy. In 2008, less than a quarter of Oklahoma seniors knew that. George Washington was our first president. Thus, we advocate character education programs, emphasizing the citizen's role rather than just the structure of government in civic education programs. Civics should be pushed just as hard as English or math. As Justice Kennedy said, democracy is something that you must learn each generation. It has to be taught. President Eisenhower once said, Politics ought to be the part-time profession of every citizen. And despite the locked school gates, despite the police dogs, despite the direct orders of their parents, the children in Birmingham did just that. 
Thank you. We are now ready for your questions. Thank you very much. In what ways does the Constitution support and perhaps thwart civic engagement? The Constitution supports civic engagement primarily through the First Amendment. Um, the right to association and to petition the government um, an association through the case uh, NAACP v. Alabama um, are all things that really allow people to participate civically uh, within their societies. In addition, the 14th Amendment also supports civic engagement due to the incorporation of the Bill of Rights using the Due Process Clause. And so this allows for the First Amendment to even apply against the states. To add on to John's point, the right to petition the government also gives minors a form of speech, as in protesting, as they will not be able to vote until they turn 18. Let's turn our attention to civil <clears throat> disobedience. Is civil disobedience always a justified form of civic engagement? Civil disobedience is surely a justified form of civic engagement um, because in the definition of civil disobedience, it requires that those protesting accept uh, any punishments that come their way. Um, Rosa Parks accepted that she would be thrown in jail after uh, sitting on the bus. And so um, with these forms of protests, if you accept your punishment, it is uh, a justified and effective way of being civically engaged. In addition, we can see from the letter from Birmingham jail that um, Dr. King wrote, we can see how he defines civic engagement and uh, it really is exemplified by the fact that people are trying to enact change instead of simply breaking the law um, just uh, due to the fact that they don't want to follow the laws. Is it, is it ever not, not justified? The only time civil disobedience would not be justified is when it strays away from being civil disobedience, when the consequences of your actions are not willfully accepted. I would argue that also when it is violent civil disobedience, it oftentimes cannot be justified. Um, this can be seen with things such as the Charlottesville, uh, Charlottesville race riots, which might be considered some form of civil disobedience. However, they are not justified because of the fact that they have um, these violent outcomes, which only increase divisions between us. You talked about voting. Should we have compulsory or mandatory of voting here in the United States like some other countries to have? Uh, why or why not? I would not look to compulsory voting, but rather compulsory poll attendance uh, as to what they have in Australia. As forced speech really isn't what the First Amendment intends for. Uh, people should vote out of both the appreciation for uh, a candidate, as well as uh, a well-informed opinion on where they stand in that person's actions during the campaign. Australia has had a 90% uh, plus voter turnout since uh, the 1990s when they passed um, compulsory uh, or mandatory poll attendance. And um, this has just allowed the country to be more representative of the people. Um, our representatives can't refine and enlarge the public views as uh, Madison desired them to if they are unable, if the, our representatives are unable to know the will of the people. And so to find uh, the general will of the people, we need to allow the people to vote and have the people go to the polls and vote. In your state and a number of others, there have been uh, protests against quarantine from COVID-19. Do you think this was a good example of civic engagement? While this was civil engagement, I would not state it as a good one, as in many cases, people were breaking the social distancing laws put in place by Governor Whitmer, putting just more people at risk unnecessarily. Furthermore, these, uh, these protests started as um, political protests, but they turned into partisan rallies. Um, people started uh, coming to the protests with Make America Great Again flags, trying to, or uh, Trump 2020 flags, um, making it a very partisan protest. And so when it was simply a uh, protest talking about um, and reminding the government not to restrict civil liberties, um, it was understandable. But once it became partisan, it lost uh, much of its convincing power for uh, the rest of us in Michigan. 
In addition, we must remember that oftentimes crisis does create bad laws and the fact that um, in during World War II, we can see with Japanese internment camps, um, those laws were uh, restricting on the rights of the people. However, um, at the time, they were what seemed to be the best, uh, they were incredibly popular among the people and they were what the government deemed best. And so it's possible that in the future, we will look at this quarantine and we'll see it as a backwards uh, thing. However, right now it is, uh, still popular among the people. If civic engagement and civic ed education are so important, would you support or oppose a policy of allowing 16-year-olds to vote in local elections? I would support allowing 16-year-olds to vote as many of these 16-year-olds uh, pay taxes off of their income, as many of them are of working age and therefore working but they have little to no say as to where this money goes. In addition, according to a study by Harvard, 16 year olds and 21 year olds have approximately the same amount of political knowledge. And so it would be reasonable to expect them to be able to have informed views. But I would have to disagree with my colleagues. I think that allowing uh, 16 year olds to vote, I am 16 and um, I don't know that I'd really want my peers voting. Uh, many people vote off of uh, a meme maybe wanting to uh, vote one of their friends, or uh, write in, oh, may I please finish my statement? Yes. Um, many people want to write in their friends. And so I don't think that um, having 16 year olds vote would really give uh, a better representation of the people's will. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Uh, we now have some uh, comments for you, Steve. Yeah, I thought you did a, did a, did a great job. I, I liked your historical uh, aspect, uh, your reference to social capital, I thought was a, a strong kind of a, a statement, a good broad definition of civic uh, engagement. Uh, you didn't just focus on, on voting, you focused uh, across the, uh, uh, the, the board. Uh, I really enjoyed what you had to, uh, had to say and you did an excellent job. Yeah, I echo those uh, comments. I I liked uh, you putting uh, the civic engagement idea in its kind of appropriate, uh, both philosophical and historical context with both Tocqueville and, and more currently Putnam. And um, so, so that, that, that was outstanding. In terms of uh, civil disobedience, you got around to, to some of, um, of those ideas and perhaps the best uh, source, at least for us in the United States, in terms of laying out a defense of civil disobedience within our framework and system of government is the letter from the Birmingham jail. And uh, so I would have liked to have heard a little bit more about King's ideas about when it's justified in a democracy. It has to be a law that doesn't square in King's ideas with moral law or higher law. And, uh, and secondly, uh, you have to have tried to work within the system uh, uh, before uh, you know, going straight to civil disobedience. So, um, but overall, uh, I was really impressed and, and uh, the b being able to use uh, statistics on the fly there with 16 year olds are approximately the same as 21 year olds. That was excellent, an excellent <laughs> idea. And, uh, I, I, uh, I, and I, think it's, I, I think it's an interesting thing, especially in local elections. Um, and I, I thought about that quite a bit. So, uh, um, but reasonable people can disagree and you did. So it was great. Mm -hmm. When you talked about 16 and 20 year old, one year olds, I was wondering whether there was a regression in terms of going to college and, and learning less. <laughs> I just want to add uh, my congratulations to you. It was, uh, it was an outstanding presentation. I enjoyed your uh, opening remarks. Uh, you gave some great examples, some, some, some really good quotes that uh, fleshed out what you, your points you were making. Uh, you, you also acted very well as a, uh, a team in interacting with one another and, and backing up uh, points of your teammates as well as uh, giving opposing uh, views. Overall, I thought you did a very, very good job. Uh, congratulations to you uh, and you and your teacher. Teachers are to be highly commended 
uh, for your outstanding work, particularly during these extraordinary times. Good luck to you.